Let me explain briefly about uh, balancing God's grace and the law to ourselves first. First, we need to understand that you know God's motivation is mainly with promises, with His grace that He has promised us from the Old Testament to the New Testament. When people obey Him, God will bless them. And actually, it's God who changed our lives first before uh, we can follow Him. We can trust in Him as our Savior and and obey Him and follow Him. It's God who started the work, and He will finish the work that He has started in us. And uh, all through the process, He uh, assures us of His promises that when we repent, the whole heaven will rejoice, and when we trust in Him as our Savior, that He will give us authority to become children of God. And uh, when we uh, come to Him, uh, when we pray to Him, He will always respond and He will stay in us and also will bear much fruit. And when we obey God, then we are building on the foundation of uh, the, uh, the rock of Jesus Christ so that everything we do will stand forever and will be uh, rewarded. And then when we do any little things to our brothers, uh, even a cup of cold water giving to them, that will by no means lose our reward. So the Bible has told us that God is pleased with every little action that we that we take, that we follow God, that God is very happy and God will respond and God will bless us. So He has uh, given us many promises too that He will be with us and, and uh, He that is within us is greater than that is in the world. That, uh, God is Almighty and He lives in us and He stays with us and He's in front of us and behind us and He's laying His hand upon us. So we can be sure about God's grace and His mercy and kindness so we can always live in this uh, grace knowing that we are His children, that, that we can call Him Abba Father, that, that we can uh, trust in Him and enjoy Him. And so this is a relationship an enjoyable relationship that we can have. So, uh, so I hope that we all say that yes, uh, God welcomes us, and God is happy that we are following Him. God is happy that we, you know, that we love Him and obey Him, and He'll reward us. But at the same time, we also have the law, that uh, because the law tells us that sinning will always bring destruction. So that we understand that. Um, if we sin against God, it's the most foolish thing because He is in control of everything. He is in control of everything in our life and everything in the world. He's in control, so we dare not disobey Him. But this motivation by the law should be a should not be the major motivation. If it's major motivation, then we always live in fear. But it should be, you know, the secondary motivation. The main motivation is God's grace and His love for us and God his, his promises and His help for us. And then the secondary uh, motivation is his, uh, his law that if we sin, there will be destruction. And uh, uh, do not sin, lest the worst thing will happen to you. So sinning can bring uh, bad things happening to us and also give the devil a foothold and he can come to uh, steal, kill, and destroy from us. So, we dare not sin against God. Now, uh, our uh, a bishop just sent a message that we can, you can read. I'm not going to say the message, but this is a warning to people that you know if they sin against God and steal God's property, that's something very, very serious. So we we must understand that it's uh, we dare not sin against God because He's Almighty. Uh, no matter how difficult it is, we trust in God and we have a close relationship with God and we don't use any method of the world, but we uh, trust in Him and obey Him and He'll bless us and help us. Okay, now, so uh, what we talked about yesterday is applying to ourselves. And then today we talk about applying to other people. That, you know, when we uh, relate to our family members, when we uh, talk to our uh, Christian brothers and sisters and when we preach that we should 
also use the grace, use God's grace as the main motivation and the law as a secondary uh, motivation. So how do we apply God's grace and law to people? Okay, now, uh, first we, we should, because of our heart of love for people, that we should say, yes, I love people, I care about people, because God cares about us. Therefore, we always want to say words of grace to people so that they will be comforted and strengthened. So here are some words of grace that we can say to people more. I care about you. I love you. You are important. I appreciate you. What you've done is great and you are precious. And I thank you and you are helpful. And you have done well. When they have done anything well, then we tell them you have done well. You are great. You have tried very hard. I noticed your improvement. So when we see that they improve, we say, yeah, I've seen your improvement and you have impacted my life. What you have done has given me positive uh, impact. You have many gifts and many strengths. God likes you. God will use you greatly. So we should say this to our spouse, to our uh, friends, uh, to the people around us, and to Christians around us and to our church members that we should always be positive. Now, of course, we, we don't lie. You know, it doesn't mean we lie if the person actually is not like that. Now, for instance, if there is someone who has committed many sins, but he repents, then we can say, well, I see that you're repenting. That is something good. And God is happy with you. And God will help you. Now, always give them promises from God. God will help you. When you follow Him, when you obey Him, God is very happy and He'll bless your whole life. So that way, then they are encouraged when they follow God and obey God. So, so I hope that we all will learn to say words of grace to people, to encourage them, uh, to find out any good things. Like for instance, our children, we like them to study more. And uh, a lot of parents would just say, keep working, keep working, keep studying. But then when they are studying, we can tell them, you're a good boy, you're a good girl, you are studying, and I'm very happy. I'm proud of you. I'm happy that you're working on it. So that's something we can, uh, we can tell people to encourage them. Yeah, what you're doing is something great. And uh, I'm happy that you're doing it, and, uh, and God bless you. So we should say words of grace to people more. Now, people, some people find it hard to say things like that. Uh, sometimes, especially to their spouse, because they say, well, my spouse has done so many uh, things that I don't like. It's hard for me to say anything good to him or her. But when we do that, when we don't say good things to them, then they have a negative feeling toward us and they will not change. But when they change a little bit, will say, you're doing well. I notice you're changed, and that is something great. And then they will be motivated. Then they will say, wow, what I've done, is ha I will have good results, so I, I will want to follow God and, and obey God and do the right things in the family, and then uh, and my spouse is happy with me. That gives him motivation. But uh, many, many Christians, even many Christians, are not willing to do that because they say, if I praise them, or if I say anything good about them, they will be proud and they will not change. Now that's not true. Now if you work on something, you change a little bit and someone says to you, wow, you are changing, you are improving, you'll be happy and you'll be motivated to change more. Now, if we come across someone, you, you praise him and then he, well, then he said, okay, I'm doing well, then I don't have to change then we can uh, use both the grace and the law of God. And we can still say, you know, um, I've noticed your change, and, uh, and if you keep working on it, uh, you'll be better and better, and we'll have a better relationship. And uh, I notice that uh, uh, sometimes you, you're not so diligent doing it. Uh, can I know the reason? Uh, what is stopping you? So we can ask them. And then if they continue to do it, we can, we can let them know, you know, um, we can ask them, uh, have you thought about if you continue to do this, how would it affect our, 
our family, our relationship. So we can use questions to help them to think. But in the process, we try to use positive words, try to use words that will encourage. Instead of saying, you're no good, you change for one day, and the next day you're lazy again. So, so we don't say things like that. That is not going to have any good result. But instead, we can ask them, um, is anything stopping you? And what can we do to, uh, to, uh, to make it better? That what, what can we do to, uh, to improve the situation? Okay, now, we also need to talk about the law of God. But we can uh, say it in a gentle way. Motivate people to obey God's law by God's grace. With, with God's grace to motivate them. God is happy whenever you pray to Him. So when we encourage people to pray, we don't just say, keep praying, keep praying. But we say, God is happy whenever you pray to Him. And God will listen to you. God is here. He, he is here with you. And God always listens to our prayer. He will listen to your prayer. And so we can pray with confidence. So when we pray, we can pray with confidence. And God is very, very happy. And then uh, God knows your needs before you pray. So before you pray, God already knows your need. And He's happy to respond to you. When you love God, He will raise you to a high level. So He will raise your life to a high level. And when you obey God, He will remember your good deeds and will reward you richly. God will reward you and He will bless you. And then uh, when you help someone, God is very happy. So we can use... God's grace to motivate them to follow God and obey God. For instance, we can say, uh, well, when we love each other, God is very happy and God will bless our family. And when we uh, are nice to each other, we love each other, then we are building a, you know, a family, a godly family that God is pleased with and God will bless our family. So we can tell them, you know, when you're doing the right thing, God is very, very happy. So we can use God's grace to motivate people to obey the law. So the first, uh, last, uh, last slide, we talk about words of grace. The, those doesn't have the law. It's just telling them, I notice you're changed, you're doing well. So it's all praising them, appreciating, appreciating them, and telling them that God will continue to help them. And then the next, uh, this slide is about, we want to talk about something we need to do, but we motivate them with God's grace to change. And then guide our spouse or children to change with God's grace. I like to have a better relationship with you. So uh, now this is also saying the words of law gently with the words of grace to motivate them. Uh, you know, to have a better relationship. This is the law. Doing something, doing something is the law. God's grace is God's help for us. And people's grace to each other is people's appreciation, pre people's help, uh, people's, uh, that they, they praise the other person. That is people's grace to each other. So I'd like to have a better relationship with you. That, so express that. We'd like to build a be better relationship. This is the law to build up a good, better relationship, something we do. And then I like that to happen. That means I'm happy when that happens. So that is motivating them to, uh, to build up a better relationship. So we, we can encourage people to build a relationship. And we, don't, and we don't need to use negative words. We can use positive words to encourage people to, to change, to, uh, to do better. But we can say, you're doing very well. And we can work on it together. So that, that is encouraging people to do better. And then, do you think we can have a better relationship? So asking questions, do you think we can improve on the relationship? And then imagine how it will be when we have a better relationship. So if we have a better relationship, how will our marriage be? And imagine that. And how can we have a better relationship? So how can we relate better? And five, I like it very much when you help me. So when we, you do anything to help me, I'm very happy. 
And also, when you talk with me, I'm very happy. When you listen to me, I'm very happy. When you are with, we stay, uh, spend time with me, I'm very happy. So we, uh, this is motivating people to obey the law, to do the right thing by grace, to say that, well, God will be happy with us and God will bless us. And don't remind people of their bad behavior. Don't accuse them in order to change them. Give them positive reinforcement. Now, we don't have to keep reminding them of their bad behavior. Now, if we need to do that, now, if the person continue to do something wrong, we can, uh, we can talk about the negative things, but what, what we can do is to say, well, I noticed that uh, you, ain't do, you, ain't do, you are doing this. Uh, for instance, he's always late. I noticed that you, you are late again. And can we think about how we can prevent that from happening again? How we can, you know, uh, that we can be more punctual. So, but we don't want to remind them all the time. So we don't remind them all the time, you're always late and make sure you're, you're punctual today. You know, so instead of saying that, we can say, I'll be very happy when you are punctual today. And then don't accuse them. Now, accusation is the worst way of communication. Some people uh, like to accuse other people. Uh, I have counseled many couples and then, uh, and then one person will say to the other one, uh, you never do it, you never want to change. Uh, it, it's always saying the negative things. Now, it's true that he has not changed in the past, but it doesn't mean he cannot change from now on. But there are many times that I heard them say, well, he's not going to change. And then we give them positive reinforcement. That means when you do something right, I'm very happy that you are improving, you're working on it, I'm very happy. And then, um, so we need to understand what's God's law and God's grace. God's law tells us what to do, uh, and then, uh, but grace is tell us what God has done for us to bless us. And God's law is tell us what God's judgment and punishment, and God's grace is tell us God's forgiveness and help. So it's always blessing and help on the grace, uh, God's grace side, and motivate us by punishment, that the law. And then God's grace motivated by grace and love. And then God's law should not be the main motivation, and God's grace should be the main motivation. Now, if you apply to personal relationship, uh, we need to tell them the law sometimes. But it's better to say, when you do this, I'm very, very happy. Now, instead of saying number two here, judgment, we can say, when you do this, I'm very, very happy. Now, if we want to remind them uh, the destructiveness of their bad behavior, we can say, well, have you thought about if we uh, continue to communicate like this, uh, what will happen to us? So we, we can ask them questions to let them know the consequences of the bad behavior. And then uh, instead of, you know, some people would motivate by punishment, you know, if you, if you don't do this, I'm not going to stay with you, I'm going to have a divorce, so that's a punishment. But instead, we can motivate by grace and say, I'm, I'm willing to build up this relationship with you so that we both enjoy it. And then, uh, so it should not be, the law should not be the main motivation, should not be saying, okay, uh, you must do this, you must do, th must do that. But instead, we say, well, when you do this, I'm very, very happy. So that's, that's how we can motivate people. Now, now also in... Uh, in preaching too, in preaching, sometimes preachers would, um, sometimes they would use the law heavily, heavily on the people and say, well, you people just don't pray and then you don't do evangelism. God is not pleased with you and God is going to, you are lukewarm and God is going to spit you out of his mouth. Now, this could be true, uh, but when we preach, most of the time we should be using grace. But some people say, if I use grace too much, people don't listen. Let me say how we balance it. We can tell them, you know, God has a wonderful plan in your life and God wants to bless your life. Do you want God to bless your life? If you love Him and obey Him, He'll bless you. Your life will go higher and higher. You become a, a great person in the kingdom of God. And 
if we are lukewarm, if we are lazy, it will be destructive. So we want to avoid that. So we use God's grace as the main motivation when we talk to our members and when we preach to them that we don't, um, you know, we don't just use the law. We don't don't just uh, condemn people or yell at people. Some people, uh, the way they preach, the tone is very judgmental. Ah, you people, you you. You need to repent. We need to repent. You, 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 you're sinning. You're sinning. God is not pleased with you. So instead of saying that, we can say, you know, when we repent, God is very happy. And God will continue to bless us. So I hope that we all come to God and say, Lord, I'm so happy to, that to follow you. I'm happy to be, to be uh, following you. And uh, so I hope that we all will, will, will use God's grace on ourselves and on other people okay now we um, we go to the next topic which is to preach uh, how to preach how to use you know God's nature preaching method how to preach with uh, proper balance of God's grace and law 